Warning. This video is beyond scuffed. It contains dark humor, old memes, and the script feels like it has hyper ADHD and forgot to take its meds today. If you don't have the attention span of a gnat, or perhaps your fee wings get hurt easily, then might I suggest ahem, that you kindly piss off. Now, how the hell do I start this video? Oh, I know! I'm gonna fucking kill him. This is blue. He's an asshole. Because no matter what game we play, I am always better. I win every time, period. So can someone please explain to me why he keeps beating me in every single Celeste race? I don't know what I'm doing wrong. Is he just better than me? He probably thinks he's better than me. So I sent a declaration of war. No longer will this skinny, scrawny, cheerful, annoying fucking ray of sunshine ruin my goddamn pride. Fight me, asshole. Let's see what you've got. And with this, he'd fallen for my trap. Because little did he know that I'd spent the last five whole minutes in a fit of spiteful rage preparing for this exact moment. YouTube tutorials, video essays, consuming an entire bag of Cheetos. I was ready. We started off completely neck and neck. Where he'd dash, I'd dash. Where he'd grab, I'd grab. Where he narrowly avoided death, I narrowly avoided surviving it. It was a battle for the ages. Filled with twists and turns. Trading places wherever we could, only just- And I lost. With him finishing the game a full five f***ing minutes before I did. I thought I had him. We were neck and neck for what felt like the entire time. How did he get ahead of me by five f***ing minutes! Unsurprisingly, I was convinced this must have been a total fluke, so I challenged him yet again. I had him this time. I knew all his tricks. With Twitch as my witness, I would be victorious! And I lost again in the exact same fashion as last time. At this point, it became clear to me that even if I tried my absolute hardest, I wouldn't be able to beat Blue. And this is the story of how I learned to speedrun an entire video game purely out of spite. For this plan to work, I needed a frame of reference, which is good, because I already had three. All of my times were just above the one hour mark, which seems to be pretty consistent when it comes to speedrunning Celeste. Next, I needed to see where I was going wrong. So, I pulled up the Any% Percent World Record. Okay, so everywhere. Afterwards, I quickly searched up some tutorials. That's a lie, somebody sent them to me. This was a guide to getting a time below the one hour mark. And if I manage to pull this off, I will have a personal best that's faster than anything either I or Blue had ever pulled off. Step one was about getting the right setup. Using the default game is fine, but I'm a speedrunner. I need all the fancy shit. Like room warping and save states. I don't need any of this manual shit. I'm here for speed. So after setting up the speedrunning tool, step two was binding. Turns out you only needed two things. A crouch dash and a quick skip. Funnily enough, both of these things are just part of the base game because the Celeste developers are fucking insane and kept speedrunning in mind when they updated the game. The more you know. Step three was where the fun began. Because here is where the video split off into three separate parts. Number one was parfait. Knowing the quickest route through each stage in order to get the fastest time possible. Number two, an important trick for saving literal minutes in chapter five. And number three, the optimal times for each area as listed here. This is the bar for a sub one hour time. And here I'd like to give a big shout out to Average Imposter. His guides were so in depth and fun that it literally made this video happen. You'll even see some example footage used from his videos here. I've left a link to his channel in the description, so please go and check him out and show him some love. He very much deserves it. Now, actually, first up, you guys ever heard of Gamer Subs? They're supposed to be an energy drink company that sells these little flavor powders as a sort of sugary drink supplement. They're supposed to have zero sugar, tasty flavors, and a nice little caffeine boost to help get you through the day. They're supposed to be trustworthy. But I'm onto them, and I think I figured it out. I don't think they're an energy drink company at all. See, I did some research. And it turns out that they even have caffeine-free options. What kind of energy drink company sells non caffeine Caffeinated products. We have to get to the bottom of this. So I bought everything they have. If we keep buying it, they'll run out eventually. And then we can figure out what they're up to. I just wish the flavors weren't so damn tasty. I've already wormed my way into their ranks, but they don't trust me yet. All I've managed to get out of them are these damn free sample packets. But they're of no use to me. Just take them and see if you can figure something out. Oh, that reminds me. I've hidden a bypass link in the description. With this, we can run their stocks dry. It doesn't matter what you get. Just don't get caught and don't be suspicious. If you don't trust hyperlinks like me, because we both know the Tooth Fairy is still out there and watching us. Don't worry. 
I've set up a secret passcode at the very last checkpoint that will make you virtually untraceable. It abuses a bug I found in the system that adjusts the numbers just slightly in our favor. It's not much, but it'll add up over time. They don't watch these videos, and if you see anyone from Gamersubs in the comments, feign ignorance, we can't let them know. The passcode will keep you safe, and if anything goes wrong, it'll be routed straight back to me. Just open the link in an incognito tab and be quick about it. Then just keep watching the video like nothing happened. I'm counting on you. Ahem. Now, onto the training arc. The epilogue was so simple it didn't even require training. Just hold, climb, and write, and then bounce your way to victory. I learned that you can skip the intro, granny, and the outro of this section to save some time. Alright, that was easy. Chapter 1, however, was a different story. Because the tutorial I was following was aiming for simplicity, it never explained the routing for each room. Which means I was the one that got to figure out the optimizations. I got to pick them! And this is where the fun of Celeste speedrunning truly began to grab me by the throat. I had to figure out what I thought would be the most optimal route through each room and chain them together. The process looked something like this. Enter a room. Have an idea. Create a save state. Attempt it a few times until I got it. Then try something completely different and see if it was fast. I did this for every room. <laughs> and you know what? I loved it! Do I jump here or start with a dash? Is this the fastest route? Or is this? Each room became an intricate puzzle that was only as difficult as I wanted it to be. The idea that leaping over the fucking abyss could save me time if I got it right, but lose two seconds if I die, made me realize just how personal speedrunning this game would be. I got to choose what strategies I thought were worth doing. And this made it even more fun! Now not only was it a question of which is faster, but also which was more consistent! And I got to pick! Me! This guy! Oh, fuck. And so that's what I did. Over the span of 24 hours, I sat down, analyzed every single room in the entire game, and used trial and error to get a combination of speed and consistency that I knew would win me the game. There are some shortcuts I haven't explained yet. First is Resort Demo, a trick that skips two entire rooms and a key animation. The problem? It's pixel perfect. Madeline, when crouched, has a hitbox that's exactly four pixels tall. Now look at these dust bunnies. That's better. It turns out that they have a convenient gap right here that is exactly four pixels tall. Do you see where this is going yet? The setup for this requires a pixel perfect grab, a max height climb jump, and a frame perfect dash just to make it through. The alternative? About a 15 second detour that just involves going oh, fast. <laughs> Can you guess which option I chose? The next two shortcuts are located in chapter five. The first one skips a key that's needed in order to open up this door. And the second skips like two whole minutes of running around like a headless chicken. Collecting both keys, opening a bunch of doors, and losing your sanity after surviving countless encounters with these fucking things. What? All that is skipped by performing what is known as a reverse super. Basically dashing one way, and then jumping in the other. This gives you your dash back and just barely enough distance to cover this gap. All that was left was more trial and error and a complex fight with Badlin. A very intense refresher of all six chapters. And taking a breather for the final flags. This game is rather kind given that both the prologue and the end of the summit don't have much in the way of complex movement. It's just... simple. Just play through the game like you're doing a casual playthrough and minimize your deaths as much as possible and you'll do fine. But now, it's time to see if my training paid off. And so we sat down, prepared for war. My rival's screen broadcasted off to the side for easy comparison, and with that, only one question remained. Can I really beat Blue? And with the bass in the background, Blue, would you like to give us a countdown? Uh, I mean, countdown to my funeral plans for this game. <laughs> and so the race began. The epilogue almost looked like we were practicing synchronized swimming, but then very quickly devolved into some friendly banter. Now, I, I've, I've learned a few things, Blue. So have I. I also believe you learned some things off of me. You can do this. With the first level completed, it was on to chapter one, and this is where the fun began. Dashing from room to room, making use of all of my training in order to ensure my progress was as smooth as possible. This might have been the easiest stage, but it was by no means a cakewalk. There were plenty of ways to make mistakes, so I had to stay on my toes. With careful timing and being sure to keep my cool, I bounced my way from screen to screen until reaching this room. And here is where I learned that I wasn't the only one with some tricks up my sleeve. Are you trying to do double spike skip? You're actually never. insane if you're attempting this. I would never do He did it! Thankfully, despite how intimidated I suddenly felt, I had managed to squeeze ahead and finish chapter one in only one minute and 44 seconds. Chapter two began with a bit more speed than the last, shooting across the starting area and dropping down into the depths below. Dashing over spikes, bouncing off walls, skipping cutscenes with- Skipping cuts. 
Skipping cutscenes with little to no effort, and traversing the landscape like it was the back of my hand. Backtracking through liquid space and traveling all the way up until our very first encounter with Badalyn. And here is where I had some tricks up my sleeve. It started with some squeaky clean diagonals, just barely squeezing through- Just ba- just barely squeezing our way through, Jesus, and maintaining a solid pace through each room, dodging and dashing our way through each transition, being careful not to get caught and dancing with death all the way until the final room. And here I had just one remaining trick still up my sleeve. Starting with the secret left passage and then dropping past 90% of the entire room, all I had to do was nail this last part and it would be smooth sailing. Fuck. Okay, now we really gotta go because Blue is already catching up. Shit, 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 Nailing the room on my second try and blitzing through the end stage as fast as I could. I was still in the lead, but only by a hair. Any mistake could mean the end, and even after completing the stage, the pressure held on. Because now, it was time for chapter three. This stage might look innocent from the start, but as soon as you make it inside, all hell breaks loose. Every room was a minefield, and the only way through was practice. The positions of these fluffy little balls of death differ depending on if you just enter the room or if you died in it. Which means that the pattern changes if you fuck up! Not only that, but there are also these weird tentacle things that turn entire areas into insta-kill zones if you touch them. This place is insane! I use some of my training to blitz through the rooms I practiced at lightning speed, showing precision and skill as Madeline deftly navigated this hellish landscape. After some well placed hyper dashes and collecting both keys, it was time for the big mess. At this point, I was still ahead, but that could change at any moment. My training had taught me that the sequence of paths from here was bottom right, then top right, then middle. As each time you hit the jellies, it spits you out right next to the owner. But Blue didn't know this. I had an advantage! And so I set off at breakneck speeds, clearing each of the three paths in record time and collecting the final key, before progressing into my favorite room in the entire game. Why is it my favorite? No reason. No, none at all. And just a few rooms later, Lied Resort Demo. Which I promptly skipped over because fuck that and decided to travel at Mark V instead. I'm fast as fuck, boy! A key animation and one long ass room later, and we were standing before Mr. Oshiro one last time. Before ignoring all of his dialogue, pissing him off, breaking through the fucking ceiling, skipping Badalyn, and okay, now it's time to get the hell out of here. As one of the spawns of hell itself tries to tear us limb from limb, we dance and dash over the uppermost platforms and make use of some clean skin skips that we learned along the way. Meanwhile, just behind us, Blue was attempting a certain pixel-perfect trick. With some careful dodges and precise timings, we'd finally reached the final room, a monstrosity of a level that required only the highest level of consistency and precision to finish. So, I started by killing myself. To begin the death cycle, obviously! This room doesn't allow you to re-enter, so knowing the cycle after death was the safest option should I make any mistakes. After some clever strats and a little improvisation after my rhythm got interrupted, we made our way through with the fastest time I had ever achieved in Chapter 3. But while all that was happening, Blue managed to pull off Resort Demo and was catching up quick! I was still in the lead, but with Blue using such high-risk, high-reward strategies, he was bound to make up for lost time. I had to play this smart. Chapter 4 is where things began to get shaky. This is by far my worst chapter, despite what my name would suggest. Everything here is about feel, and is the most improv-heavy chapter of the lot. After a quick chat with Granny, it was time to face some heavy resistance. Each room became a constant struggle between timing and trust. Thankfully, I had some strats up my sleeve to lessen the load. Here is where an understanding of hitboxes helped me out a little. Without demo dashing, Madeline's hitbox won't squeeze past the spikes if you dash diagonally. But, thanks to a bug in the code, if you entered the bubble in a crouched state, her hitbox is shifted slightly in our favor. It allows for some clever skips like this. Shout out to Average Imposter once again for introducing me to such a neat trick. After some more skips in the following rooms, I decided to take these ones slow. I didn't trust that I could use any of the faster strats in these rooms because they required immense precision. In this room, however, I just couldn't help but try. All that's required is a reverse extended hyper of this cloud in order to breach the gap. And even after a few failed attempts, I just had to do it. Some more clever tricks a room or two later, followed by this message from Blue. Should I go talk to the people who are gonna buy me my coffin now or- And it was time to use the best tactic I knew of. Which was to stay the hell out of this room! Some bubbling, wall jumps, and more bubbling later. Shit, you didn't see that. And here is where the wind picked up. After some crumbly platforms and taking a snowball to the fucking face, it was time to show the fruits of my training.
And with that, we'd managed to survive chapter 4 in only 5 minutes and 21 seconds. We'd so far managed to maintain our lead, but now, it was time for chapter 5. Here is where I had trained the most. This chapter was a true labyrinth of skill and precision, and I'd practiced every room. Blitzing from transition to transition, nailing Skip's first try time and time again, ricocheting off the floors and walls and zooming from bubble to bubble, I was unstoppable. That was until I rushed a dash at the very end of the room. It stung, but I was still ahead. After cleaning up for my last mistake and pressing a couple of buttons, it was time to become a giant blob of sentient jelly and kill myself. I meant in the game! Afterwards, we get to play a fun game called Ignoring Everything Badeline Says, and then begin the gauntlet. In this section, every room has the same goal. Leave! Sometimes dodging under, sometimes over, sometimes using these guys to collect keys or avoiding them at Mark V. These strategies worked all the way until the very last room, where I just kept dying, fuck! With Seeker Hell survived and some clean bubbling later, it was time for the biggest skip I had in my arsenal. This is Search Skip. The trick that skips two entire minutes of hell in one move. If I can get this first try, I'll finally have a time to rival Blue. And we fucking nail it! The rest of this section feels like a piece of cake in comparison. Ignore that. Oh! Hey Theo! Here in the run is where most of my practice goes straight out the window. Even so much as the slightest deviation from what I knew would cause these fuckers to go in a completely different pattern. Which means I'll need to use some improv to make it through. And with that, we were through. Chapter 5 done in a time of 8 minutes and 21 seconds. Chapter 6 was my favorite by far. It had feathers, pretty colors, and Kevin! Woo! Go Kevin! The first few rooms were done without any fuss. Just grab a feather, give Kevin a high five, and then hop through the nearest transition. Once we'd made it to the main room, however, this is where all my practice began to shine through. It started with some clean hyper dashes into some crisp high fives, maintaining momentum as the rooms began to fly by in a blur of crystals and color. I was on a roll, and I wasn't slowing down soon. From Kevin's to crystals, pinballs to feathers, I had this level in the bag. Nothing was gonna slow me down, and I was gonna relish every second of it. During my training, I learned that you can squeeze through this gap here just above Kevin to save some time, and discovered that I was most consistent at the lower rooms, despite their difficulty. With my practice shining through, it was just a couple of consistent feathers over an endless abyss until we got to have a pleasant chat with Granny. Now it was time to really test my training, descending into the mouth of this crystalline cavern, giving Kevin a good slap and then falling through ice and spikes, taking the plunge into unknown depths and watching as purple tendrils receded into the unknown. Saying hi to Kevin one last time before he ferried us across a seemingly endless expanse until finally, we'd arrived. Boss fight time, baby! It was time for a battle with Badalyn, an intricate combination of defiance and anger, with our opponent desperately trying to make us quit as we stubbornly advance. These rooms were some of the most fun things to practice in the entire game. Figuring out the most aggressive patterns to reach Badalyn as fast as possible was so rewarding, seemingly defying death as we shot towards her at breakneck speeds. The rush was exhilarating. Every room felt like we were only moments away from death, only to pull it back at the last second and continue on. Even even as the enemy questioned, interrogated, begged us to slow down, our only response was to advance. Through spikes and lasers, death orbs and platforms, all we did was press on until finally... She broke. After consoling our inner doubts and anxieties, and coming to terms with our fears, we finally feel whole. Now armed with two dashes and our sights set on the summit, we finish chapter 6 at a staggering pace of 8 minutes and 45 seconds. And with that, it was time for the finale. 3,000 meters of complex mechanics, all to remind you of how far you've come. Each layer mimicking a previously conquered chapter, from the conveyor belts in chapter 1 all the way to the feathers in number 6. Every 500 meters brought a brand new challenge. This is the final fight. And of all things, my rival's strongest chapter. Let's go! It began with the simple stuff. Dodge the spikes and make use of your dashes. Summit isn't afraid of removing the floor from underneath us, so every move will be a fight for our lives. Dashing over the abyss and dicing with death at every corner. Once we'd reached Badalyn at the very end and completed the first stage, that was zero meters complete. Here the music shifts and the mechanics make themselves clear. Or at least, 
They would be clear if I didn't have so many tricks up my sleeve. Every area in this section felt like it had one skip or another. Be it ignoring crystals or refusing to grab falling platforms, every room offered some form of optimization, and I was gonna make use of whatever I could. 500 meters down, onto a thousand. With another shift of the music, it was time for space jellies, and at this point, I was in my comfort zone. Abusing those squeaky clean diagonals was my specialty, and this room offered more than I could ask for. Here, we were in my territory, blitzing through rooms with little to no hiccups. Even if I stumbled, the mistakes would be resolved as I just kept progressing. This area gave me a bit of trouble, but once I'd figured it out, we were back to smooth sailing. And with a deep breath, 1,000 meters had been crushed. 1,500 meters is where I really needed to dial it in. Chapter 3 was no joke, and its big brother up in Summit would be no easier. I just had to keep my cool and remember what I'd practiced. The next two rooms were about keeping my cool and relying on my innate sense of timing to make it through. Now for this monstrosity. Not dissimilar to the final room in Resort, here we had nothing short of another gauntlet on our hands. Unfortunately, despite my practice, I was still not comfortable with this room and paid the price dearly. Only after a long series of deaths did I manage to make it through. But it wasn't over yet. Making use of some clever tricks I'd practiced and blitzing through another gauntlet at lightning speed, I still had a few tricks up my sleeves, but I'd have to make it quick. A few careful jumps and dashes later, and it was time for one last skip. Namely, this one that abuses two hidden passages to save some time. And with Badalyn waiting for us once again at the end, it was time for 2,000 meters. Another music shift, and suddenly it's like we're back in chapter 4. Starting with a sneaky trick to reach the second floor, and then losing my sanity to these fucking clouds! It was time to face some hefty resistance once more. I hadn't trained Summit as much as I'd like to. I would have to rely on intuition here more than practice. I knew there were a few tricks that I could make use of here, but I didn't know the execution, and that lost me some time. The next rooms went by smoothly, making use of some quick improvisation and staying on my toes. I wasn't gonna falter now. Not after coming so far. Progress was smooth, and despite a hiccup or two, we were still nicely in the lead. But just as we reached 2,500 meters, Blue had reached the summit, and the chase was on! Chapter 5 might have been one of my specialties, but in Summit it was a totally different beast. The precision needed for this area was not to be taken lightly, but if I managed to play my cards right, I'd still be able to stay ahead. It started off with some stumbles in the third room. I wasn't comfortable with the movement here, as conveyor belts always seemed finicky to me. Nonetheless, I grit my teeth and finally found a way through. During my training, I'd been introduced to a key skip within this room, but the strategy for it still eluded me. I would have to take the slow route. Through the next few rooms, I could feel the pressure was getting to me. I knew that Blue had entered the summit, and he'd already cleared the first 500 meters. It was down to the wire. This was his best segment. If I was going to stay ahead, I'd have to pull off something crazy, and I'd have to do it fast. Luckily for me, the pressure seemed to have cleared my vision, and from the moment I picked up that key, I had not made a single mistake. Blitzing through each room with precision and careful consideration, I was nailing tricks that took me hours to figure out. Back to back to back. You could clearly see my surprise, but I couldn't stop now. And with Badlin waiting for us at the very end, it was time for 3,000 meters. 30 flags stood between us and victory. All I had to do was keep my cool. And do a little bit of shit talking. Hey, Blue. Hi. 29. He's counting. <laughs> 28. As strong winds bore down on us and made us fight for progress, all we had to do was just keep moving. 27. Clambering up the walls and over razor-sharp spikes. 26. All it was was a game of consistency. Even if I stumble, all I had to do was get to the next flag. 25. Bouncing precariously from platform to platform. 24. Even as the ground itself crumbled from beneath our feet, we had to keep going. 23. The winds kept beating down on us. 22. As we launched over spike-filled cliff faces, all I could think of was don't look down. 21. Combining springs with crumbling platforms, only to be met with a desperate climb to the next checkpoint. 20. This was it. A mad dash to the top. Just keep going upwards and don't slow down. You can do this. And with Badlin's help at the end, we were on to the next section. 19. The wind switched directions, almost as if to encourage us onwards. 18. And then 17, one after the other, with walls of razor-sharp crystals blocking our path. Using a cloud and some careful dashes, we'd made it to 16, with 15 right around the corner and 14 just above it. We were gonna make it. Just a hop, skip, and a few precise dashes before we hit the next checkpoint. 13. With even more springs and crystal walls, this checkpoint added a set of keys to the mix to spike up the difficulty. 12. Stretching the use of our dashes as far as they'll go, snagging crystals and jumping off walls to continue upwards. 11. It was time for precision, maintaining as much height as possible to finally make it to the next flag. 10. Not far now. Just under and over with a clean little diagonal at the end. 
Nine, time to make use of even greater precision to make it up and through in one piece. Eight, using the clouds themselves to help us climb even higher. Seven, nearly making a misstep only to catch ourselves and press on, up and up and up to the final checkpoints. Six, it was time for the very end. A feather into a cloud and all the way up the walls to number five. With flag number four precariously placed just barely above it, the path to number three took precision and patience, stretching each dash as far as it could take us and riding the feathers to the end. This is it, the final three. Just a feather, some careful dashes between razor sharp fractals and one last feather to the next spot. Two, stretching each jump and every dash one last time to climb as high as possible, then leaping over the abyss, catching ourselves just barely on the side of the wall, then snagging the next two crystals and holding our final dash till the very last moment. One. Thank you, Twitch chat, for performing such excellent counting. Truly, the MVPs of this race. As the summit flag approached us, and the evening sunlight began to hide behind the clouds, we finished, Celeste, with the final time of 51 minutes and 6 seconds. My fastest run yet. With the race over, tensions relieved, we got to celebrate by supporting our rival through what also turned out to be his fastest run ever. And with that, thank you for watching. These videos take forever to make, so I truly hope you enjoyed it. If you did like it, then please share it to someone else. I don't care if you subscribe or comment or like the video. Just share a good time with others. And this is the part of the video where if I was a lesser man, I'd probably thank my patrons, but I literally told them not to throw money at me. Oh, and before I forget, I'd highly recommend joining the Discord.